One of the absolute best ways to determine the value of a stock is to discount a cash flow model. In today's video, we will build this model from scratch and I'll guide you through the entire process. If you want to get access to all of these models I use in my videos and more, including the discounted cash flow, discounted dividend, Grahams and much more, you can head over to my Patreon in the description. Anyways, getting that self-promotion out of the way, let's get started on building our model. So let's go to an empty sheet. The first thing that we want to do in our discounted cash flow model is to get an idea of what the free cash flow growth of the company that we're analyzing has done in the past, if it has grown, if it has declined. What we do in this is we make a small part of, of our analysis and we just fill in the previous free cash flows of the past 10 years and we get an average growth out of this. So how we want to start doing this, we want to have a year. And we want to have a free cash flow. The free cash flow row is going to be the one where we will inputting our data. So let's say 10 years in the past, we go 2013, 2014. And after that, you can just drag it. Um, so let's see. Let's say, yeah, uh, to 2022, since that has been the past year. And we want to uh, center this. In here, we will be inputting our free cash flow. And we'll be doing that in a second. What we also want is a percentage of growth. Because we want to see what the growth year over year has been. So let's input the values that it has been over the past 10 years. So I use the website Macrotrends to get my free cash flow uh, numbers for a certain company. So let's start that off. Um, so we can see here in 2012 it was 42,561. So we'll just fill that in. 42,561. For the next year it was 45,501. 45501 Now we have imported all of the free free cash flows of the past for Apple so we can get a idea of what the growth has been for this we used the formula is D3 divided by C3 minus 1. Then we get an idea of what the growth has been. So, for example, in this year, we can see that the growth in free cash flows between these two years was almost 7%. What we can do, we can drag this all the way to the right now. This way we get the growth or the decline of every year, uh, year over year, in their free cash flow. As you already can see, well, I can see it, uh, but not you. In the bottom right, you'll be able to see the average. But what we want to do, we want to make a, a, a formula out of this. So let's just say we want average growth. And what we want to determine here is we want to use the average function. And then we want to drag it all the way here. What we then get is the average growth and free cash flow from the last 10 years. So the first step of our model is already done seeing that our average growth is 13.06% now. What we then want to do is we want to do an expected growth. So here we're going to input the growth that we personally expect that in this case Apple can achieve. So let's just say in this model we go for 8%. Let's just fill that in. We can make it 8%. Now our first uh, part of the analysis is completely done and this is making an expected growth rate out of the past uh, free cash flows and then we just have to expect something and that's based on what the average growth has been. What we now want to do we want to actually start calculating the value. In this case we will start by year, future free cash flow, future free cash flow and the present value of free cash flow. In this case, we will start by projecting the expected growth rate in the future and we will be discounting the present, uh, we will be discounting this uh, free cash flow with a discount rate that will determine in a second. So here we want to start with 2023. Actually, uh, we need to drag this down one more. Uh, yeah. And then we start uh, with 2023, 2024. And now we can drag it again to the right, just like we did earlier. And we want to start with 2031. And we want to put here terminal. 
since we're going to be determining a terminal year of valuation since a company does not stop their business after the 10 years that we're valuating it. So we will be determining uh, the value of a company's free cash flows after the year 2031 with this one. We'll get to that in just a moment. What you first want to do, we have now an expected growth rate. What we can do with this is we can determine the, uh, the future free cash flow in 2023. What we want to do is first we want to refer to this cell because this has been the last uh, free cash flow numbers that we have received. And we want to press F4 and make this, uh, yeah, make this set. And then do it times bracket open one plus our growth rate. This way we get our growth rate. And as you can see, it has been input here. And this is the, 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 with our expected growth rate, the future free cash flow, or in this case, the free cash flow of 2023. We also want to start discounting it. How are we going to do this? We're going to put a number above every, uh, every year of how many years it is in the future. So in this case, it's one year in the future. In this case, it's two years in the future. And we want to, again, make this, uh, I put this everywhere above our years. In this way, so we get one to 10. What we then want to do is we want to do, we want to refer to this cell. We want to do it divided by bracket open one plus, and it's going to be somewhere here. So let me first do that. Let me, I'm skipping over a few steps here. We want to do the perpetual growth rate of the, of the economy, preferably, and you want to do a discount rate. Let's first do these. So the perpetual growth rate is the growth rate of the of the economy uh, in the USA in this case. So what we I usually put here is just three percent, since that is on average what it grows at. And our discount rate at this current uh, inflationary environment, I usually put this at nine percent, seeing as a lot of things are very expensive at the moment, and also for companies to get money is very expensive. So nine percent seems like something that I would personally always use. For some companies, it might be 8.5%. For some, it might be higher. That is something you will have to uh, find out yourself. So what we want to do is we want to discount this few, uh, this free cash flow. How we're going to do this, we're going to, again, refer to this cell. We're going to do it divided by bracket open 1 plus this one. 1 plus the discount rate. And we want to put this, we want to press F4 again. This way we put this uh, in, in, in dollar signs so it doesn't move. And lastly, what we want to do is we want to do it to the power of this. In this way, we can uh, we can discount it. For example, this, this way it discounts it for one year. But in the future, it will have to discount it for two years, three years, four years, and so on. So in this case, it only discounts it once. And... Just removing some decimals, we get the present value of the of the free cash flow in 2023. Now, what we want to do is, of course, determine it for the for the next years. So, what we want to do here is we want to use a different formula again, and in this case, we use is C11 times one plus the expected growth rate, and we want to again put this in dollar signs. Then here we get the, uh, the yeah the free cash flow of 2023. And what we can do now is just drag it all the way to 2031. And we get the future free cash flows for Apple. Of course, we want to make them the present value again. And we made, this, uh, we made this formula dynamic, so we can just drag it all the way over here. This way, we already got the present value of the future free cash flow to 2031. What we then want to do is to determine a terminal year valuation. How we're going to do this is as followed. We want to get the past uh, free cash flow. So that is in this case, this one. So we want to refer to K11. What we then want to do is to do it times bracket open one plus one plus the perpetual growth rate divided by the oh wait sorry bracket open the discount rate minus the perpetual growth rate and then we get our terminal valuation and this is all the the value of the uh, the free cash flows after the year 2031 
and we once again want to discount uh, discount this and we just use exactly the same formula. Now we have done the second part of our analysis and determining the future free cash flows for Apple. What we want to do next is to start setting up how much the company is worth in its equity and how much the stock price eventually is worth. So we want to make a sum of free cash flow. We want to get that for let's just for, do that first and then we just want to do a sum function and we want to drag it all the way there. Now we have determined that the value of Apple uh, of Apple's uh, free cash flow is just over two and a half trillion dollars. What we want to do next is to add the cash and equivalence and to add their debt. So their total debt. What I use here is uh, Google Finance to, the, uh, to get these, uh, to get this data input. So we go to uh, Google Finance. Uh, in this case, we choose Apple. We go to financials and we go look at their balance sheet. In this case, we can already see their total debt is 200 and, uh, 120 uh, billion dollars. But we're doing our uh, calculation in thousands, I believe. So what we want to add here is uh, one, two, two, and then zero, six, nine. So this is uh, the, the no, this is the cash and equivalents. This is the debt. Of course, the next thing that we want to get is our total uh, or our uh, cash and equivalents. And you can find that there under total assets, current assets and our cash and cash and equivalents. And this is forty eight billion dollars. So let's add this uh, this number. So it will be forty eight three oh four. Forty eight three oh four. There we go. And we want to preferably remove the decimals on these ones as well. What we then get is our equity value. And what we will do to this is we want to do it is the sum of free cash flow plus the cash and equivalents subtracted with the debt. And this is our equity value. And we're getting very close to the final valuation already. What we want to do next is to get our shares outstanding. And we'll divide the equity value by the amount of shares outstanding. In this case, in Google Finance or Google Finance, not Google Finance, in the Finance Yahoo, you will go to statistics and you can go to uh, somewhere. Yeah, shares outstanding. You can see Apple currently has 15.82 billion shares outstanding. Well, since we are doing our calculation in millions, we'll just have to fill in 15,800, right? Let's see. Oh, uh, it's. Yeah, 15,820. And then we can determine our intrinsic value. What we all have to do to do this is take our equity value and divide it by the amount of shares outstanding. And then we get our intrinsic value, which in this case is $158. What we can do then is we can add the current price. Let's just say current price. Uh, and the upside in dollars and the upside in percentages, for example. So let's say the current price is $152.55. $52.55. And that is an upside of $6. And in percentages, we can say, uh, let's see, it's this minus this. Subtracted by one. So it's a 3% upside. So in this case, you've completed your entire discounted cash flow analysis. What you could do next is to make it look good and give it some makeup. So for example, you add some, uh, some lines here, a uh, line here, and you give your input fields a color. That's what I personally did on my uh, model if, is give all of the input fields uh, a color. So let's just do that real quick. This is an input field. These two are also input fields. Um, let's see, these two are input fields, uh, shares outstanding is an input field, and the current price is an input field. So here you can see what you will have to uh, input, what you will have to put your data in to uh, perform the analysis. And this is just a simple way to uh, give yourself some idea on what you want to do. So in this case, it would maybe look like something, uh, something like this, and then you already have it uh, looking a little bit nicer.
And you can do this with any company. You will just have to use this website that I personally use. I'll leave it in the description. It's macro trends and you can see the uh, free cash flow of a company. And you'll have to use uh, Yahoo Finance to get the current price and the shares outstanding. And this way you can perform this analysis. If you like this video, I would very much appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more tutorial videos. And as always, thanks for watching.